a KQED HD production. People are frightened of bats because they fly. People think they get in your hair, they purposely fly in your hair. People want to know, uh, is it true? Do they actually bite people? Bats have been misunderstood and feared for centuries. But for the Northern California scientists and volunteers who work with them every day, the very things that make these animals scary also make them compelling. They fly, and there's no other group of mammals that have powered flight. Around the world, bats are important pollinators of crops and other plants, like cactus. But in California, they're voracious insect eaters that help control pests. I think they make an enormous contribution when you consider that a lactating female may eat as much as her own weight every night in the summer. And here in the Central Valley, you have huge numbers of Mexican free-tailed bats as a pest control service. Bat researchers Dave Johnston and Winston Lancaster have been studying the Mexican free-tailed bats that live under a bridge 20 miles south of Sacramento. In the summer, they've counted as many as 22,000 bats nestled in the wooden beams under the bridge's third of a mile span. Now the bats are in these tiny little crevices. They like the narrow space. That's really quite comfortable for them because they're protected from predators. Today, Lancaster and Johnston are out with some of their students from San Jose State University and Cal State Sacramento to find out how many bats live under the bridge during the winter. That's six right there. Dr. Lancaster and I would like to learn more about the movement between the Central Valley and the Central California coast. We'd like to know what the winter population is. Presumably will be a much fewer number of animals, those animals that didn't migrate. They're cool, you know. People think of them as rodents, but they're actually much more closely related to, to primates than they are to rodents, and they're really social, and you know, they're, they're fuzzy and cute. Under the bridge, Lancaster attempts to record some of the bats' calls. Bats use sound to orient in space. It's a process called echolocation. The animal makes a, a sound of some kind and waits for the echo to come back from an object in its past. There's a search phase of echolocation in which the animal is just flying and making a sound, looking for insects. The bats increase the rate of repetition until they're very close to the object, very, very short calls, and this is the last approach. While a human adult can only hear frequencies of up to 12 kilohertz, bats emit calls that are 20 kilohertz and above. That's why Lancaster needs a bat detector to translate the high frequency bat calls into sounds that humans can hear. But when the bats are resting, there aren't any calls to record. We could be hearing anything, like I say, us walking around, wind noise, the animals uh, moving a little bit. But there's so little activity right now that I don't expect to hear a lot of echolocative uh, vocalization or even social vocalization. You heard some before. Yeah, I, I heard a few social, uh, social calls which are audible to us. And you'll hear the squeaky sound. That's what that is. It's uh, hello, how are you? It's uh, get out of my way. It's all those things. So this is a very social species. With 1,200 species of bats living around the world, bats are the second most numerous group of mammals after rodents. Some 25 species of bats are found in California. We have some absolutely beautiful bats in California. The western red bat, absolutely gorgeous color. 
and another is this spotted bat, which is mostly all black, huge ears, and three bright white splotches on it. Hoary bats are really beautiful because they have tricolored hairs of brown, black, and white. And they have relatively large eyes, and so these are they're very attractive animals. So we've covered about 10 or 15% of the bridge so far, and in that span, I've counted about 2,500, and that's actually more than I had anticipated. At the end of the day, the researchers had counted almost 16,000 bats under the bridge, many more than they expected. Their findings suggest that a group of bats lives under the bridge year round. You know, I thought that this would have many fewer, knowing that many of the Central Valley bats, the Mexican free-tailed bats, go into the Bay Area. The high numbers also reconfirm that the bridge remains one of the most important roosting places for Mexican free-tailed bats in the Central Valley. This isn't a coincidence. When Sacramento and San Joaquin counties rebuilt the bridge in 2004, they worked to replace the bat habitat provided by the old wooden bridge. The redwood boxes that were built into the new bridge's concrete have become a successful alternative. The thermodynamic qualities of that bridge, the concrete, heating up during the day, providing an optimal uh, temperature to raising babies. So it's definitely a success story. But while some California bats, like the Mexican free-tailed, have benefited from urbanization, other species have seen their numbers decline. There are probably about 16 species of bats in the Bay Area. And what we're learning is that more and more of these species are more sensitive to urbanization than I think we previously thought. Townsend's biggered bat, the pallid bat, are probably the most sensitive. The long-eared myotis, we had thought that that was probably doing reasonably well. It's usually found in a number of forests. But we're finding that we're not seeing many recent records but certainly habitat fragmentation and habitat loss are probably the big suspects. And even the bats that do make a comfortable living under bridges and inside buildings are under threat. When bats and humans come into close contact, the bats often end up needing help from people like Francis Zitano. I am a pathologist assistant at Kaiser South Sacramento Hospital by day, and at night I'm a bat rehabber. When I started looking for a house, I, I figured I need at least a three bedroom so that I can have a room for the bats. I'm permitted by the Department of Fish and Game, and they are allowing me to take these animals in that are injured or orphaned and basically rehabilitate them, nurse them back to health, and re release them into the wild. There we go. And there are five right now that are waiting to be released when the weather gets better. You better chew it. A lot of the calls are um, from people who have a bat in their house sometimes, or um, somehow they found it in their garden and it's on the ground. Zitano and fellow bat rehabilitator Corky Quirk nursed the bats back to health with worms for the adults and worm smoothies for the young or injured. And they provide them with pieces of cloth to hide behind. This one here is a Mexican free tail. Now this little girl is non-releasable, at least for now, because she's having this problem with her feet where we, I can't tell if it's an infection or something, but she seems to be losing some of her toes. Uh, this is a little brown bat, and uh, he has a, a dislocated shoulder. My thought is possibly a cat uh, jumped and caught the bat while he was flying. Bats in California face a greater threat than common predators. A fungal disease has killed more than one million bats in the eastern United States since it was introduced to New York State in 2006, likely from Europe. Infected bats appear to have frost on their snouts and chins. The so-called white nose syndrome affects bats hibernating in caves, causing them to starve to death. And they're constantly itching 
irritated and they may not be able to keep their fat reserves because their metabolism is at a fairly high rate through the winter. And that may be why they're emaciated when they come out sometime in the early spring. Efforts to treat the disease have failed. By 2011, the fungus had been confirmed in Indiana, and bat scientists expect it to reach California. Our bats typically do not go into the deep hibernation when this fungus does its worst effects. So that's a wild card out there, and we just don't know how it's going to affect our bats. Come on, sweetie. Hey. It's a really good feeling to know that you've nursed it back and it's okay and then you let it go. And there are a couple more things Zitano would like you to know about bats. Uh, bats don't get in your hair unless you have a big hairdo. There's only three species out of the 1,200 in the world that drink blood and they're all in Mexico, South America, or Central America. And don't worry, even those bats rarely bite people.